Anurban, one of the great controversies that we have in the field of consciousness studies is, is it wholly physical or is there something else needed, something non-physical, dualistic, or something way outside the traditional laws of physics? Uh, from the work that you do, how do you see this, uh, this tension between the, the materialistic view of consciousness and other alternatives? So, personally, I think that uh, if we consider just materialistic view, that it is the matter that is doing everything, uh, it will be erroneous. And if I think that something else sitting out there and that is the consciousness and then somehow we are going it, that's also wrong. So I cannot support either of the views. Okay. So I support something different and I suggest that um, the matter and the energy, they come together and they dance together. They create the harmony or the rhythm. So, so just if energy was alone in the universe, there could not have been consciousness. Mm. If the matter was alone in the universe, uh, uh. there could not have been consciousness. Because they came together, they started dancing together. That's why consciousness was born. So there is no need to support either of them. Both needs to be rejected and something else has to come forward. Because matter and energy are equivalent and then energy and frequencies are equivalent. Yeah. I mean, there's a constant and that yes. relates both of them. Yes, and we are also not looking at the matter. We are looking at the symmetries. It doesn't matter how heavy elephant is, it's, it, it is important how his symmetries are arranged, how the new kind of ordering is composed to compose the music. And that music gives its, um, its consciousness. So what you are suggesting is that the, the way that we traditionally look at all reality uh, is, uh, is misguided, that there is a deeper reality mm -hmm than what we are fiddling with uh, in our traditional science. Is that right? I would say that uh, we are selfish. We want to, we are, we are, we, we scientists are also religious. Well, some of us, we want to believe in some waves <laughs> that is pervading the universe and yeah. there is consciousness. And we believe strictly in it. We are religious about it, very dogmatic. And some of us believe that the consciousness emerges from the materialistic right, uh, right. They are very dogmatic with it. They don't want to leave that. So, uh, so that, that's the reason uh, this kind of uh, trouble is taking place and people are fighting with each yeah, other yeah. and they're trying to, uh, one is trying to downplay the other's yeah, view. Right. I think that the, there is a religious belief kind of, um, kind of a strong uh, suggestion yeah. from the materialistic uh, scientist that um, the consciousness must emerge from the material itself. Right. We don't need anything else. And then those people who are who are the other way around, they say that there is energy that was existing all along the universe, the time immemorial, <laughs> and uh, the now consciousness we, is primordial. And yes, primitive. and we we are just a part of it. We capture it yeah. from the right, air. Right. So my memory is in the air yeah. somehow yeah. vibrating, and then I capture it. Uh, just like an antenna receives uh, something. So both the things are in common. They have to come together, but they, if they come together, many times when two contradictory concepts or beliefs or faiths, they come together, at that point of time, it is not necessary that we need to take some property of this, some property of that. Sometimes we need to reject both of them and come up with something new. That's why I do not say that matter, energy, duality. I say symmetry and vibration of symmetry. So symmetry or other kind of term could, could, could be taken, which would create the composition of music or the vibrations. And that could take over the, by switching aside the matter and energy both. And, and this is a universal quality that pervades everything. Everything. So, so any physicist, no physicist would fight with that. So if, uh, if you ask any physicist, okay, I want to replace with uh, uh, symmetry uh, every single, single matter, they will not. Because you go to the elementary particle physicist yeah. and you go to the person who are working on molecular scale in the DNA right. level, a biologist, wherever you go, nobody opposes the symmetry concept. So that's why right. I think that's a, that's a good line to begin with and to replace everything. But in that process, there's nothing special about consciousness because you have the same analysis for everything. Yeah. So every single thing is analyzed in a similar way. That doesn't yes. mean that nothing is special. So when you are composing... So how then is, is consciousness special or, mm. or, or is it not special? Both together. Because it is special because 
a certain set of elements come together and mirrors the entire vibration and, and try to replicate and try to harmonize with the universal chain of vibrations that is connecting Planck world mm. to the uh, ultimate form of universal mm. uh, vibrational chain. Mm. So th those elements could be you and me, a human being, is a string of vibration and trying to harmonize. Isn't it special? So that string is of course special. Mm. So it is a special in the sense that it is trying to mirror or harmonize with the with the entire vibrational chain of the entire universe. So that's why it's special, but it is not so special because it is a part of that. <laughs> so, so both are together. So we, we cannot uh, argue or fight with it, you know. <laughs> so fighting would be very difficult when you come closer to the truth. That's what I also believe. <laughs>